What's good everyone, it's your boy you dig, 4 eyes, 2 G's here, and today we're here to talk about this collaboration right here, Movie Hips between Ferg, Nicki Minaj, and Made in Tokyo. Now this collaboration has made history, just not in the way they perhaps wanted, with it becoming the biggest flop ever in the history of the Billboard charts. Now in this video, I'm going to be discussing the behind the scenes stuff that some of you guys might not know that goes down with all these insane fandoms, like group buys, the streaming farms, and the insane lengths that some of these fans go to, to make their favourite artist song a success. I want to break it down. Let's get to it. Pass me a chair that can't stand me. RKO me a beast boy, I'm feeling like Ram. Trying to catch me a net like Sandy. Know this shit ain't a game, you get crushed like candy. Let's go. What this shit can get while I Dion Tay. In Dallas, I shoot like I'm mine. Tay. Slide on your block in a hunt. They get that boy a halo like Beyond. Say, my bitch, she get wet like a tub. One night, me a bitch, I ain't kissing the giving no hug. Like, like a ball, like a bulb, ain't stress about hoes. Okay, so let's just back it up a little bit. So, this song, as you can see right here, gets released in late July. Then, in the first week on the Billboard Hot 1, 100, it debuts at number 19, which of course is pretty good, but then the very week after it drops down 80 spots to number 99 on the charts to where it's basically out of the charts entirely, guaranteed to be out of the charts by next week more or less. Now you may be wondering how a fall like this is actually possible, considering artists like Nicki, Ferg and May in Tokyo are pretty big. Well essentially what happens is, when people like Nicki Minaj, Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, who have these huge insane cult fan bases release music, these fans all come together to try to inspired to make the song a success by essentially stream farming the music, buying multiple versions of the songs and doing all these other techniques to kind of make the song a success. As you can see right here, on July 28th, before the song was even released, you can see Nicki stands all in Ferg's replies, kind of coaching him and guiding him on how to make the song a success. Look at this right here. Make digital downloads on your website, please send it to radio and Spotify curators, support us and help organize buy parties. And there are literally hundreds of tweets like this. And this happens for all the big releases from artists I just mentioned like Nicki, Justin, Ariana, etc, etc. And you guys will notice you'll see the same tweets over and over again saying the exact same thing, like these ones right here, that all say the exact same three points. This is because, as I said, these people are literally in group chats buying multiple versions of the song and essentially stream farming the song just so it's a success. And then on top of that, we even saw people asking them to release an alternate version of the song just so it hits number one. We saw people threatening Ferg, which you would notice there was a lot of very threatening type of tweets right here. It's literally insane. And then, of course, as we know, we got the merch bundle deals that they all do now. So yeah, going back to this right here, in the very first week, as you guys saw right there, that Barb's were going very hard writing for Nicki, doing all these extreme things just to get the song to number 19. But the thing is, you can only unorganically prop up a song for so long. It's not like you can literally buy endless digital downloads and you can endlessly stream farm the song for literally weeks on end, or at least for most people, who knows for the Barb's. So yeah, by the time the second week came around and we saw it drop to 99, basically we got a more accurate reflection of how popular the song actually is without all these insane techniques from the fans. And as you guys can see right here, the video which was released, what, a week ago now, only has 700,000 views, which again points to how popular the song actually is. This song was never meant to be number 19 on the charts, it was only number 19 on the charts because all of these barbs were playing the song on Spotify literally 24-7 during their sleep and were buying multiple versions of the song. Now, this is where we get to this tweet from Chart Data right here, which reads, ASAP Ferg, Nicki Minaj, Made in Tokyo, Move Your Hips, records the biggest single downward moment in Hot 100 history, 80 spots. Which just goes to show how much of a colossal impact all of these techniques by these fans have on the commercial performance of the songs. And there's no telling and there's no regulation on any of this right here, because technically they're not breaking the law and they're not doing anything illegal. So this happens literally all the time with, as I said, these big fans with these bigger artists. And there's even been cases of artists allegedly kind of supporting this process. As you guys can see right here, Hardy B herself apparently sent 2,500 to some fan page or a group of fans to buy WAP the single, which of course, as you guys know, has gone on to be number one and this huge success. And I can guarantee you Cardi stands and Meg stands have been going crazy using all those techniques I talked about to kind of prop up the song. But to be honest, that song's a hit anyway and it was gonna be big regardless. But as you can see in this case, with Move Your Hips, it definitely made a huge impact. And the reason why we 
saw this big drop from week one to week two, which again was record breaking, was because of all of the techniques from the fans, which as I said, you just can't keep doing week on week. There's only so long you can unorganically prop up a song's success, where if it's not actually connecting with the public and the public aren't actually playing it out of their own will, it's just not going to be a success regardless. But yeah, as I said, definitely something interesting to note. Let me know how you guys feel about this in the comments below. Is this a culture of fandom that you kind of support, or do you think these fans are going too far? As I said, there's no real way to regulate it, and technically they're not breaking any laws, so don't expect this to end anytime soon. Also guys, before we finish this video, I'm going to give a couple quick shout outs from the Instagram. Big shout outs to Billy Barnett and Cobb Lux for following me over on my IG. Much appreciated you two. If you guys don't follow your boy man at your dick, make sure to go show me some love over there. Also, a reminder about the big cartel where we have a couple merch pieces available. We have some Cardi merch pieces. We have the dig merch piece. We also got a couple other nice designs. If you guys want to check it out, link will be in the description to purchase one. But that's all from me today, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. If you guys haven't, make sure that like, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications, all that good YouTube stuff. That'll be much appreciated. And there are more videos of mine on screen right now. Make sure to check them out if you haven't.